Hey there, welcome back. All right, in this module, we're going to introduce design of experiments, which we'll typically refer to as DOEs. Well, specifically, by the end of this module, you'll know what a design of experiment is and why it's so powerful. And you'll also understand a key difference between a DOE and something called a one factor at a time, or OFAT experiment. And finally, by the end of this module, you'll know what the three most popular types of DOE are as we prepare to dive into each of them in coming modules. Okay, well before we jump into the topic of DOE, we'd like to take a step back and review a few of the important concepts we've learned thus far in this course. For example, early in the course, we learned how to create different types of process maps, which allowed us to identify the many different inputs, or X's, associated with the process. We then learn how to use a cause and effect matrix to identify critical inputs based on their impact to key customer requirements. In other words, we're able to load all the inputs identified during process mapping into the CNE matrix in order to gain a better understanding of which factors are the most significant. And once we've narrowed the list of inputs down with the CNE matrix, we can then load them into the FMEA, which is a tool used to identify ways in which a product or process can fail enabling the team to identify countermeasures as needed. Now the FMEA also helps us continue narrowing the list of inputs down through the analysis of the RPN number. Now, we then spent a lot of time discussing the many different types of hypotheses tests that can be done. As a review, hypotheses testing helps us make decisions about population parameters through the analysis of sample statistics. For example, we can use the two simple t-test to determine if the means of two different variables are statistically different. Well, doing small studies like this can help us determine the importance of factors. So, like we introduced earlier in the course, we can use a funnel to describe what we're trying to do as we leverage the many different tools we've learned about thus far in the course. For example, Let's imagine process mapping has helped us identify 10 different inputs, or Xs. We then use tools like the CNE matrix, FMEA, and even hypothesis testing to help us narrow this list of inputs down to a more manageable level. And to be sure, these tools do a great job narrowing the list. But there's one last tool that we haven't discussed that really provides the finishing touches to the domain process. And that tool is DOE, or Design of Experiments. Now with respect to the funnel, DOE would be found at the very bottom of the funnel, leaving us with the most critical inputs, or red X's, that must be controlled and or optimized in order to ensure optimal process performance. Well formally defined, a design of experiment provides a structured way to change multiple settings in order to understand their impact on the process. Now as it turns out, we've actually learned about the DOE concept when we cover two-way ANOVA. You see, in a two-way ANOVA, we're studying two different factors at two levels, which is an example of what's called a full factorial DOE. But, as we'll see, the DOE tool has much more to offer than a basic two-way ANOVA provides. Now, as an aside, if you haven't watched the lessons on ANOVA and hypotheses testing in general, you'll definitely want to do so before attempting to understand DOE. Now, to explore this DOE concept further, let's imagine we're researchers that have been employed by a motorcycle manufacturer who wants to know how to maximize fuel consumption performance. Well, specifically, they want to know how three factors, tire pressure, the speed driven, and the gasoline octane used, impacts fuel consumption, which is measured as miles per gallon. So, in order to conduct a study inside our lab, we set up a test station that allows us to control every variable in a controlled manner. Now, the motorcycle actually sits on rollers, allowing us to run it at precise speeds as needed. Now, once we have the test station prepared, we're ready for our first trial, which has us setting a tire pressure to 35 psi, running the motorcycle at 55 miles per hour while using 85 octane gasoline. We then run the motorcycle inside the test station until all the fuel is used. This allows us to calculate the miles per gallon for this trial, which, as it turns out, was 24 miles per gallon. We then decide to see if changing tire pressure has any influence, so we inflate the tires to 40 psi, but keep the other two factors the same. And when we finish the trial, we discover that we got 32 miles per gallon. In other words, 40 psi definitely seems to be the best tire pressure. 
So with this known, we decide to stick with 40 PSI for tire pressure and move on to test how speed impacts miles per gallon performance. So we run the motorcycle at 65 miles per hour for this trial, but leave the octane at 85 since we don't want to change too many factors at once. And when we finish this trial, we discover miles per gallon drop to 25, meaning faster speeds definitely impacts performance negatively. So for the last trial, we leave tire pressure at 40 since it was the best and change the speed back to 55 miles per hour since that was the best. This leaves us with the last factor, octane. So for this final trial, we fill the motorcycle with 90 octane gasoline. Once the trial is over, we learn the performance was the same as the previous trial, meaning the octane used doesn't really seem to matter. So as a result of this study, we conclude that in order to maximize miles per gallon, our tire pressure should be 40 PSI and we should drive 55 miles per hour while using 85 octane since it's less expensive and perform the same as 90 octane gas. The question is, have we just performed a design of experiment and really determined the optimal settings? Well, the answer, unfortunately, is no. You see, what we actually did was known as a one-factor-at-a-time experiment, or OFAT. And sadly, many people believe this sort of one-factor-at-a-time experiment is indeed a DOE, when in actuality, it's not. You see, as we'll explore in our next module, when we have three factors at two levels, we actually need to do eight trials in order to test every possible factor combination. And as we see here, we've only done four of these eight trials. Now, when we do the other four trials, we discover an extremely interesting interaction between the factors since setting the pressure at 35, driving at 65 miles per hour, and using 85 octane gasoline actually results in a miles per gallon performance of 38. So had we only done the four one factor at a time experiments, we wouldn't have discovered this powerful interaction. Now, obviously, this is a fictitious example, but what's not fiction is how dangerous and ineffective one factor at a time experiments can be since they don't test every combination of factors like a DOE does. Okay, well to wrap this module up, we'd like to introduce you to the three types of DOE we're going to explore in the coming lessons. First, Screening DOEs allow us to, as the name implies, screen many factors at one time in order to determine which are worthy of deeper investigation. In other words, if we were working with five factors, we would use a screening DOE to help us determine which of the five seems to be the most significant. Next, full factorial DOEs help us test factors across all possible combinations in order to determine which factors are statistically significant. Now, these DOEs are sometimes referred to as characterization studies. Now, since full factorial DOEs test every possible combination of factor setting, they can take longer to complete and cost more money. This is why we often use screening designs, which don't actually test every combination of factor settings, to help us narrow the number of factors down before running a full factorial DOE. And last, but certainly not least, optimization DOEs help us identify optimal factor settings in order to hit specific targets. Now, these DOEs are definitely the most advanced of the three, but when they're done properly, the information they provide can be extremely powerful. In summary, screening designs allow us to test the most factors, but are definitely the, the least robust of the three DOE types, while optimization designs involve less factors, but are highly robust in nature. Okay, and that wraps up this introductory DOE module. In our next video, we're going to take a closer look at full factorial DOEs. So, we'll speak to you soon.